Hello everybody, how are you today? Today we're going to do a practical task that involves drawing using a viewfinder. To start with though, I would like you to record the definitions to the terms that are on this sheet. So I'm just wanting you to match the term to the definition. There's also a task at the bottom where I'd like you to draw moustache on one of the city workers and some earphones on two of the workers. So you can do that on the printed copy or you can do it online using Google Slides. And there is a instructional video in the first packet of work which I've put on there for you to have a look at if you would like to have a go at using that particular format. All right, so let's move on. Now you'll find this page where we have uh, part of John Brack's work where I have put some viewfinders over the top of those people in the foreground. You will also have a grid, which you are then going to draw that image on to. Now, if you don't have a printer, that's fine. We can quickly draw that grid. To draw the grid, you just need to have a piece of paper, A4, and if I get you to get a ruler and a pencil, make a two margin, oh sorry, a two centimeter point at the top. So we get our top margin that will be two centimeters across. We then are going to make a margin of two centimeters on the left. So mark top and bottom, rule that, fantastic. Awesome. And then we're going to create a margin on the right side of one centimetre. And then I'm going to just rule those points together. Now, points across, we're going to go across by six intervals, six, 12, and the last one's 18. And down the side, it will be eight centimetres. So starting from that top corner where we've plotted those points, eight centimetres, 16 centimetres, and then 24 centimetres. Do the same on the other side. Eight, 16, 24. Then we're going to just rule those lines across. Great, awesome. And we just need to put the points at the bottom of our grid, which will be six, 12 and 18, giving us a grid to work that image onto. So don't forget to put your name at the bottom. Fantastic. Now, if you've got the grid printed, you can just go straight into doing the work on that grid. So if we start with working up this person, you'll find that to mark out the face, I'm going to go around and I'm going to just mark the points where the face, the silhouette of the face hits those lines on the grid. So if I did that particular point and that point, we've got a curve that comes around for the gentleman's face. So I'm just going to connect it like so. We've got the nose that comes in a little bit um, across on the line, but it comes down at an angle, but not all the way down to the bottom part of that grid, just about a bit lower than halfway. So I can come out and make the nose. That side of his face dips in, goes out a li little bit and then comes down along the chin line. And of course, we've got the mouth that's at the bottom. It goes straight down, curves out a little bit where the chin is. Then the chin curves back around, comes back up to go across into the next grid, coming across the jaw onto that part of the grid. Likewise with the head, the head actually goes pretty much straight across the next grid 
into that grid on the right side but not all the way to the edge nearly halfway which is about there and then it goes down to meet the next horizontal line of the grid the ear sticks out just a little bit above that line comes down curves under and then back into where the neck would be so I'm using those points on the line to mark where I need to sort of take my silhouette of the man. So I've got that part of his shoulder, his neck actually comes down like so, and then we've got his jacket that comes out in that manner. And of course the hair shape comes in around like that, goes across the next grid, and then scallops back around to be tucked underneath the ear, and he has a dark bit of hair on the top of his head. And of course there's an eye which is worked up with some shading. So I'll just quickly do that. And then his other eye starts not on that second vertical line but a little bit across nearer to the nose. It curves up in the shape of an eye and then we're going to work the shading and record what we can see in that example and so forth. He actually has a mouth that's sort of a little bit downturned. He's not looking very happy and so forth. And he has actually got like a dark section there over in his ear. Now, what I would like you to do is to record the shading. So I want a dark, a mid and a light tone. And I would like you to use a pressure technique to record that shade. So I'm going to use my pencil, not in the pincer grip, but on its side, and I'm going to press rather heavily to get that particular depth of shade I need on the edge of the gentleman's head where his hair is. Now I want it nice and neat, so you will need to take your time and you'll find that I have got a sheet of paper underneath here to protect my table because the last demonstration I did I happened to get paint on it and it took rather a long time to clean it. So if you've got some paper or something you might like to put under your desk that's fine. So now as I come towards this other side of the hairline it just gets a little bit lighter so I'm going to put less pressure on my pencil. I don't want you to use the rubbing technique because with the rubbing technique it's very difficult to achieve precise detail. It will be harder to control. And then I'll just work a little bit across his hair on this one so you can see that I'm slowly building it up. So I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on the pencil to achieve that depth of tone. Now remember, I want it nice and neat. If we come down to the shirt section, we can create that collar. It's almost a triangle. In fact, it is a triangle shape. I can draw that in and then it meets up to the other side of the jacket. So all this section in here on the jacket is actually a mid-tone. So to get the mid-tone, I'm going to put less pressure on the pencil. Less pressure on the pencil, still keeping it nice and neat. Fantastic. So I've got one that's just worked up a little bit um, further along, so we're not wasting time just looking. So you'll see this section here is now worked up similarly to the one we have on our example. And to get the very subtle light tones, you even need to have less pressure, very, very subtle pressure on the pencil to get a very, very light tone. So you can just see I've started to put a bit of tone on the side of the nose there, and it's very light lighter than the mid-tone and much lighter than that dark tone. So I need you to make sure that you're using pressure to achieve those different tonal grades. Okay, fantastic. Now, the other thing I'd like you to do is to use a pencil, colored pencil like brown, to work back over some of those shaded areas. So. For example, if I come up and work over these darker areas up in this section of the man's hair, I can get like a tonal 
finish with just a hint of color that makes it look quite drab. So it's not really colorful, but we can just see a muted tone of brown on top of his hair. So I have worked up another one that's a little bit further along than that one. So you can just see where I've mixed that pencil shade into the man's hair and you'll find that that just gives it a hint of that color and having that darker tone underneath you can see it's like a deeper richer sort of dark deep tone and if you happen to have a four or six B pencil you might even like to come back on those really dark sections and work it up with one of those deeper pencils and to get the really, really dark, dark tone that you can see in the example. Okay, that looks good. He has actually got a very, very dark section there in his ear. So if we work that up, we can see that that would then take that part that we see in his ear, the middle part of his ear. Now, if you do need just to clean up a few sections, you can use a rubber just to clean up the edges to make it nice and neat. But I'm really looking for a very neat shading coverage, nice and even. So you can see on this other one here, I've spent some time to try and get the different levels worked up so you can see that I have got that very deep tone on the edge. And I have actually worked that up before I put the colored pencil on top. So it's nice and neat and I'm sort of using circular motions to get it nice and neat and if need be I'm coming back to clean the actual edges to make it nice and crisp. Okay so I'll continue working that up and I'll bring it back to school. Perhaps we can cut them out and stick them on a large sheet and present them as one big work as if they were a crowd of people working in the city. Okay so looking forward to seeing your work everyone and we'll see you soon. Don't forget to put your name on your work and bring it back to school when you return. Okay, that's all for now.